what how did you get to this point where you, you know you're not in a home right now I lost my job, and then, you know you always want paycheck from being homeless. Right. I lost my job, and then I lost my place. You said something so amazing. Everyone these days are living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. And it only takes one missing one paycheck to be homeless. Yeah, that, yeah they, where I come from, that they say you one paycheck from being homeless. Right. This is Ask Pharmacist Tish, and I'm here to interview the wonderful people of downtown Charlotte. And who up? And who want to? Man, don't let like to talk no more. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Come on, baby. My name is Tish. How you doing? Yes. Right. My shake so. your hand. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, that, that, you are so smart. Thank you. There you go. And so, what is what name do you go by? Mel my, 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 my ancestral name is mm -hmm. Justice Melakai Melchizedek Ilbay, but my government name is Lonnie Alton Monroe. Oh, okay. And yeah. how long you lived in Charlotte? I've been in Charlotte since 2000. Okay. <laughs> Be careful, get out the road. Okay. And where were you born and raised? I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Get out the road. <laughs> oh, so you, you're from New York? Yeah. Oh, okay. How long you been in Charlotte, you said? Since 2000. 2000. Okay. And so what brought you down to Charlotte? Well, um, I came down here. To, I really came down here to help my cousin mm -hmm. because um, I'm a paralegal. Oh, really? Yeah, Do we um, work as a paralegal? No, I didn't work as a paralegal, but I studied it. Okay, good. And um, I was trying to help my cousin with some more science. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I came to Charlotte. Okay. I was and, trying to help him. And so how was life in New York? It was good, but I'm going to tell you how my childhood, how... My childhood, right? When I grew up, I grew up in um. When I grew up, I was about ten years old mm -hmm. when, when, when I was coming from school, and Martin Luther King it got killed. Oh, and I wow. was wondering how I was going to live in this world with these Europeans that hate us so much. Why they hate us so much? Okay. So um, I started um. No, I just didn't know how I was going to live in this world. Right. Because they hated us so much. Because I grew up in the turbulent sixties. Right. Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. So you were around where Martin Luther King you. How was that day for you when you heard he died? I when he was killed, it, yeah, um, assassinated. Yeah, I went. I was coming home from school. I heard. How what grade were you in? I don't even remember what grade I went. But mm. I was about maybe nine or ten years old. Okay, right. Yeah, and, um, I didn't. I just it just put me in a shock. You know what I'm saying? How they hate right. me so much. Right. You and know. so, how was your child? Did you have a happy childhood, or like yeah, yeah, how I'm, many brothers and sisters did you have? I had two brothers and one sister. God bless them. My sister and my old brother passed away. Mm -hmm. I still got my youngest brother and my mother. She was 91 years old on her birthday. I'm 65. Oh, wow. You look great. Thank you. You look very great. I'm sorry, my eyes. And so how long, um, so how was your parents? Did you have your mom and your dad? Or? No, my, my, father Boy, died you when, my father died when we were very young, but my mm -hmm. mother raised us. Mm -hmm. and she, was, she did a job some men couldn't have did. Mm -hmm. Let me do my interview, man. You did yours. Let me do mine. Mm -hmm. Please, man. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. So you had a happy childhood? Or yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. She did the best she could. I went to, we started off, I went to a parochial school, which is a Seventh-day Adventist school. Okay. And they put, um, they put the seed, she put the seed of God in me. Okay. So we to so look for God. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I finally found him. I found him. And I know him now because I know, I say, how will you know God? I know through his word. Right. And that's why how I know him. So your um, your your faith and your Christianity really get you through yeah. everything. When I was well, I woke up one. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I woke. Up, I'm gonna tell you my testimony. I woke up. Okay. One morning, I was sleeping on a concrete slab and a piece of cardboard, mm -hmm. and I started praying, thanking God because He made that cardboard and that cup like I was on a king size bed. Oh, right. And I prayed to Him, and um, now I got a king size bed. But you know what I'm saying? He looked out. He did something for me. Right. You know, I'm thankful for that. Right. So you had an overall happy childhood, no problems, no, no, no big issues or anything. No. Okay. So what kind of work did you, did you ever, were you ever married? No. Really? No. But I, I, I lost the best thing I ever had my childhood, my, my high school sweetheart and right. my home girl, my round the way girl. What happened? I was too busy running around and I thought I'd be missing something. And I, right. I lost the best thing I ever had really. Right. Well, if it was meant to be, it would be yours. So, yeah. I mean, you're very nice looking everything. So you always yeah. have another opportunity, you know. Yeah. And so, what? How did you get to this point where you, you know you're not in a home right now? 
I lost my job, and it, well, you know, you always want paycheck from being homeless. Right. I lost my job, and then I lost my place. You said something so amazing. Everyone these days are living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. And it only takes one, missing one paycheck to be homeless. Yeah, that, yeah that's they, where I come from, that's what they say, you one paycheck from being homeless. Right. Yes. What kind of work did you do? I did um, construction work, demolition, with my uncle. He was a contractor. Uh-huh. That's the kind of work I did with him. Okay, do you have any children? I got two daughters and I got two grand, I got a grandson and a granddaughter. Okay, how old are they? Well, my grandson, he's in high school. Mm -hmm. I, my granddaughter, she's in junior high school. And my, my daughter's, well, I was two age by me. I was 25 when I had my first daughter. Oh, wow. Okay, so, you were older. Yeah. And um, um, I was um, 26 when I had my second daughter. Same, my, I'm saying my, 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 my round away girl. Mm -hmm. She, me and her got together. Oh, so you, you had your children for your round away girl? My round away girl. Your, your, your high school sweetheart? No, my round away girl. Oh, oh, okay, never mind. I got it now. <laughs> It took me a minute to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> and so what happened with that relationship? Why y'all never got married? Because she was a runaway girl? <laughs> no, because she passed. How what happened? She got caught up in the pan in the in the, um she got caught up and um she just passed. Mm -hmm. She passed. Did that how did that affect your life? That was when I left New York. Mm-hmm. Oh that's what made you like, yeah. I gotta get something different, do something yeah, different. I gotta get out of here. Right. But I was about forty then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You look 40 now. So, um, how, what's your relationship with your children? I call them. I go up there and visit my children. I go up there and visit them. Mm -hmm. You know? That's good. Yeah. All right. So, any, um, like, did you have any issues with, like, substance abuse or anything like that? Um, no. I, well, alcohol, yeah. I mm -hmm. started drinking a little bit. And, um, but I, I, I kept, I had a job. I even had a job here. I was doing bread and let abatement work. What kind of work? Lead abatement. Okay, got you. Mm -hmm. And um, I lost, I lost, um, well, when the, after 9-11 um, and um, mm -hmm. they, they canceled that because they started the war and um, the government contract fell because it was right. government, it was federal subsidized and I just got, I just, from then I just got stuck in the cracks. I fell through the cracks. Right. Yeah. And so you said that you, alcohol was never really an issue. Was it an issue or... You kind of downplaying it, or yeah, like, it was an issue with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are do you do you still have that issue now? No. I can tell. Well, how did you break that cycle of being, you know, drinking alcohol? I asked God to help me. Mm -hmm. I took it out of my mouth. It tasted out of my mouth. Wow. How long did that take? Not long. Mm -hmm. Not long. So, are you a part of a church now? Well, I'm a well. I go to a few churches, but I'm a laborer. I'm mm -hmm. a laborer for God. Right. You know, because I know his word and I'm responsible for what I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you become friends with this gentleman over I'm here? Not. He was trying to sell something to me. He was just trying to sell something. I know him, but he's kind right. of twisted. He's got a couple of screws missing. <laughs> he's tightening up. Right. And so how was the community with everyone, and, you know, the homeless community? Are y'all like a family or? Yeah, we're like a family. We have our issues, but we're like a family, like any other family. Right. Yeah. And so, what do you want people to know about you or, like, how can we do better as a community? So, like you said, you know, you somehow fell through the cracks. Like, what, in your opinion, can we do to close the gap, to close the cracks? Because it's so, look at this. Look at this area. It's beautiful. This is what we can do. This, look at this beautiful, it's a beautiful area. I yeah. mean, this is one of the, you know, yeah, like. It's the heart of the city. This is what we can do, though. Right. This is the most richest country in the world. It is. Even a dog deserves somewhere to live. Right. It should be something that they, they give they can it should be able to give everybody out here somewhere to live. Right. And, and it don't make no sense that they can. What did you do during COVID? I thought they had like a hotel or something that everyone's saying. Some of them. Mm -hmm. Some of them did. Some of them caught COVID at the hotel. You know, you get confined. This out the atmosphere is the best place to be at really. Right. You don't, we're not breathing the same air. Right. So, um, basically, I try to stay out of crowds. Mm -hmm. How is your health? Like, do you have any diabetes, high blood pressure, or anything? Or I did until I lost weight. I was almost 300 pounds. I had to what? come down. Uh huh. Yeah. I came down because I had started getting. I started had high blood and high diabetes. Now I don't take no medicine. Real? So you are taking medicine? I, yeah. That that um yeah um 
diabetic and stuff, but it was so hard on me. It almost killed me one morning. How so? What do you mean? I was talking to my oldest brother, God bless the dead, and I had shot the incident in my stomach, uh -huh. and the sweat popped off my head. Uh -huh. And I said, man, I said, I just shot the incident in my stomach. I said, the sweat popped. He said, get some, get some sweet, and I put the sweet in it. Right. No sugar will kill you faster than Oh, I than brought it down sugar. too low. Yeah. And so how do you take care of your health when you're homeless? How do you, like, do you have a doctor you go to? Like... Did you, like, you know, how do you, how do you deal with that? How do you have diabetes? How do you have di high blood pressure? I go to the emergency room and they, they, they hook me up with, um, something half scale, something scale, sliding scale. Right. And, um, I get my medicine from them. So whenever you need health care, you go to the emergency room. Yes. So that's another reason why it's best for you to find a home so you can get your health care. Yes. You know, in order, stuff yeah. like that. All right, before you, before we, before we end, like anything. No, it ain't over, man. Stop that bullshit, man. I don't care what you're Stop. Go ahead. Okay. What, what, what do you want people of Charlotte in the world to know about, you know, your story and, you know, what, in our communities, like, what can, you know, what can we do? Oh, um, don't forget us and just right. come out here and help us, please. That's all I want to know. We're human and we're out here. Right. And uh, everybody deserves a place to stay in the richest country in the world. Right. They can send all them billions and trillions of dollars overseas to fight wars and everything. How do you feel Why? about that? Tell me about, how do you feel about being homeless and then America is like funneling, like all of a sudden they got, you know, billions of dollars to send over to Ukraine. Like, how do you, I mean, I know I the world is one big community. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, I feel it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that they can't help their own people. Right. And they try to tell everybody in the world how to live. And look how they got us living. They try to do all this for the other world, for the world, but what about us? That's what I want everybody to know. What about us? Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, I appreciate you so much, Malachi. I appreciate you too. Thank and you. And hopefully we can see you around one day soon, right? Yes. Thank <laughs> all you. All right. Thank you. Take care. You're welcome.